TV. We are live. What's up, Yvonne Baker? What's up, Tony Bree Love? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of strange not having Chris in that middle, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, well, uh, where's the... <laughs> Where's the guy in our group? Exactly. You know, it's kind of strange not having him here. But uh, Chris is going to be sitting out. Thank you for joining the show tonight. I'm Joni Breedlove, and that wonderful lady that is sitting there and next to me uh, is Yvonne Baker. Good. And uh, Chris, is, <laughs> Chris is sitting out tonight. He's taking care of some family business with the little ones. So we wish him all the best. Uh, family first. That's right. Always family first. Yep. That's the way we keep it here. So, uh, here on uh, Hot Topics Talk Radio TV, you know, we've got an interesting show lined up for you. Hi, Miss Michelle Polk. Just a moment. I'm going to get to you in a second. So we've got an interesting show lined up for you tonight, uh, and it is titled Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh and the shutout of the transgenders. So that is what we're talking about tonight. Uh, gays, lesbians, transgenders, how uh, uh, being a part of the armed forces uh, is affecting them, they're affecting their lives, how uh, being shut out uh, and being uh, forced to, you know, live a lie, basically, forced to live a lie. That is what we're talking about tonight. Um, I am going to share tonight's um, link so that uh, if you choose to uh, get on air with us on camera, uh, you can do so. So I am sharing that link right now. I'm going to hit it right now. So you guys should be getting it. Also, we are taking calls. So uh, you are welcome to call in at area code 702 uh 970 h t t r so you are welcome to call in please be aware that it would be one caller uh per per call so if you find that you can't get through please try again and we will take your call because this is going to be one of those uh topics tonight yvonne that is uh is sensitive it's sensitive Fair. and, and um I think I had mentioned in, in my promo, it's an important topic. We don't want to say anything that's going to offend anybody. So uh, please know that if you are listening in and uh, either gay, lesbian, or transgender, we don't want to offend anybody. That is our priority because we want to give you the utmost respect. So getting into tonight's topic, uh, if you didn't have a chance to read the, uh, the, the show description, um, here it is. <laughs> so Don't Ask, Don't Tell was an official um, United States policy on the military service uh, by gays, bisexuals, lesbians, uh, and it was instituted by the Clinton administration in uh, February of 1994. Uh, the don't ask uh, part of the don't tell policy specified that superiors should not initiate investigation of a service member uh, and his his or her orientation without witnessing disallowed behaviors uh, through credible evidence of homosexual behavior. This could be used uh, to be an initiation of an investigation. Uh, unauthorized investigations and harassment and, and suspect servicemen and women uh, led to an expansion of the policy to do not or don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue or don't harass. So that's where it ended up in 1994. But to give you a little background, uh, the creation of the United States military uh, since its creation up until uh, 1960, there was no ban on transgender people. Uh, from serving uh, or enlisting in the U.S. military. However, from 1960 to June of 2016, there was a blanketed ban on all transgender people from serving and enlisting in the United States military. Uh, they were allowed to serve 
but they had to serve in, they were able to serve in their preferred gender upon completing transition. So if you don't know what that means, they had to have transitional surgery in order to serve even, you know, as a transgender. Um, where was I? Oh, so from January 2018 to April 11th of 2019, just this year, Transgender individuals could enlist in the United States military under the protection or under the condition uh, of being stable for 18 months uh, in their preferred biological gender. Uh, well, of course, our uh, our sitting president, fucking mobster, uh, as of April 12th, uh, 2019, just this year, just now, things did change and a directive memorandum that was uh, enacted by Trump. Uh, it was citing that transgender personnel of the United States mil military, they're not able or allowed to serve or enlist in the United States military, only, on, only in the exception that they serve under their biological gender. So Yvonne, that's kind of crazy to me because if you're tran transgender, as of now, due to a memorandum that was enacted and put into place by Trump, if you are transgender, you have to serve as your biological gender. gender. So what's the point? The point is, is he didn't want, he don't want transgenders in to serve in the military. One of the things that, um, uh, when I heard this on one of the shows, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I don't know if my volume is up. Um, I heard this on one of the shows that um, two trans, excuse me, two transgender male mm -hmm. that, well, females. And excuse me, I don't know proper protocol on calling, you know, which way to call it, but. Well, we learn it too. Yeah. yeah. They had um, trans from male from female from male to female. Okay. And according to them, it was a medical. It was going to cost the military too much money because they thought that they were going to try and finish their transition, and that was one of the reasons why fifty three decided to. Um, um, 45? 45, whatever he is. <laughs> Hair <and> chop. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's one of the reasons why he don't didn't want them in the military. But if you're coming in already going in as a uh, you know, you're having all your surgeries that you've already had. It's not costing the military a dime. Yeah, but, I, get, I get you. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it appalls me to think that this this carrot top can dictate the dictator. Who serves where? These people, I don't care if you're transgender, uh, gay, lesbian, whatever. You're out there putting your life up for our country, protect right. our country. So my thing is, what difference does it make uh, what your sexuality is? That That's my thing. That's my thing. Because, you know, I've got this issue with uh, homophobic people. You know, some people might not think that it's homophobia, but what else could it be that you could... Uh, limit somebody on their potential, you know, or how could you dare think that they are less than you because of who they are? Um, but it's it's all about a homophobic attitude, I think, with this administration. When we talk about, you know, people either gay, lesbian, and like the description said, bisexual, or even transgender, I think it's just a homophobic act. Because for you to put a memorandum together and you place it into law that, and it is not like he, it's not like this, it's not like this policy was taken to the Senate 
and voted on. It was a memorandum. It was basically an executive order. So if you've got such a homophobic attitude, then you're, you're now discriminating against a whole group of people who just want to serve their country. And who cares what they identify with? The ultimate, I think the ultimate goal is to be able to serve their country and be proud of the country of which they live. That's my thing. So I don't know how anybody else will feel about it. You know, I have heard that when you are, when you have an issue with something, and in this particular case, if you're homophobic, you're not comfortable with your own sexuality. And Mm -hmm. scares people that um, it's it's people that uh, have that's homophobic. They may have a tendency of, of, of being homosexual themselves and they're fighting that feeling. So the first thing they do is they lash out. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you hear about the, the and I can't remember, I, I said I was going to make a mental note of the city and state that this happened in, but you know how they go. <laughs> <laughs> in one brain pocket and out the out other. The other. <laughs> But there was um, there was a transgender community, mm-hmm. and two African I think they were African American, but two trans were jumped on and beat up unmercifully just a few days ago. So you know, not only do they have issues of their sexuality, their trans you know being trans you know, being trans, but just think they're black and they're trans, you know, it's- I couldn't imagine what someone has to go through just to be themselves. Really? I mean, you know? it's not, you know, some people say, well, you know, God don't make mistakes and, you know, that it's nature. Right. I mean, I don't think they woke up one day and say, oh, I'm going to be a trans, I'm going transgender, to be a trans- right, or I'm going to be gay, I'm or I'm going to be, be lesbian. lesbian. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's just, I just, I, I really, I don't know, it just, I'm so outraged about the way people are so racist, so... Well, let me ask you this question. Yeah, but let me ask you this question. Other than having a homophobic, because homophobia is a fear. Yeah. Um, what is it that it's a fear of, do you think? I mean, we're talking on a wide, wide scale here, even with the U.S. military. What is the fear? Well, I don't know. I don't, you know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. You know, like with the military, I I don't think they're, you know, the other guys in the in, in the military had a problem with it. I mean, it's I, I believe I believe it's something that they have accepted. Right. Right. So why my you know, why is he why does he have such a, a an issue with it? Why would he, you know, uh, uh, prohibit transgenders from from living their life, living their life in the military. Right. I mean, if right. they can get out there, you have straight women out there that's on the front line, fighting right alongside the men. So, why can't transgenders get out there and and fight right alongside the men? And 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 you know, everybody. Everybody's out there to protect everybody else. You're right. You're right. And you know what I find equally uh, sad is that, you know, I think I had mentioned to you, because when you brought this topic up, I think I mentioned to you, I see, you know, I've been seeing this commercial and I don't know if it just plays here in, in Vegas. I don't know. I would think that it would be a nationwide um, advertisement, I think it would be, but it's a commercial where there's two blacks uh, 
uh, one is transgender and she is with her, her partner. And the basis of the commercial is that she had been evicted from her apartment because she was transgender. And it shows that she's with her partner and they seem to be in love, you know, that kind of thing. They're just trying to live a life. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the commercial, it says um, uh, it's, it's discrimination and um, same sex marriages uh, are legal. It's against the law to, you know, discriminate. It was saying all of this in this commercial. So I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but every time I see that commercial, I'm struck as to what people have to go through because of who they are. I'm not going to even say because of it, their choices, because it's not a choice. It's just who they are. It's, it's all about the uh, molecular makeup uh, in the brain uh, when you are uh, formed in the womb. It has all of these things that all of these, you know, sparks that are hitting each other saying, okay, now you're a girl or now you're a boy, or if you are a boy, this is what your brain is telling you, you're a, gr you're a girl. So I do believe that um, those who are uh, gay or lesbian, uh, transgender, I do believe that there's something that goes on in utero at the time of birth that tells folks, you know, who you are. And if, if you are who you are, then who is it for someone to say that you can't be who you are? Whether or not you want to serve in the military or get an apartment with your partner, uh, marry, who is it that says, because God, you know, we say it all the time, God doesn't make mistakes. Right? But there are mistakes being made. Hell, there are a whole lot of men that I know that are freaking mistakes. Okay? <laughs> And they're not transgender. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm not trying to be, make light of it, but that's just the way I feel. You know, we say God makes no mistakes, but we then, you know, demonize who these people are. You know, they're just being who they are. They are. They're being. I don't know. And it's yeah. just, and you, well, this happened a couple of years ago. Um, the two 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 gay guys were getting married, and they wanted mm -hmm. this baker to bake them a wedding cake. And I saw baking. that. Yes, and he stuck to it. He would not bake their cake, so they took it to the to the media, and mm -hmm. you know it was all over TV. I think it was well yeah. way before I left Vegas, but right, you know something like that. That is not. Personally, it's not your business. It's, it's really not. It's really not. Because, you know, I get, I, I think what, what bothers me most, what bothers me most is that, you know, we live in a society where, you know, people will say, you know, either they're religious, they're, you know, I'm Christian, you know, and I practice Catholicism and I'm spiritual and I love everybody. But then... Who are you to judge yeah. what someone is or who they are or how they live? And, you know, I get, uh, I was kind of like, when you said this subject, I thought, oh, I hope I don't say the wrong thing. Because I can get really, really ugly when it comes yeah. to people judging folks. I'm sorry. You hear that in the background? <laughs> yeah. <Is> that, uh... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but oh, know, my gosh. Now, you know, I have to be honest. I'm old school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see a lot of, I see a lot of interracial relationships mm -hmm. in which that started because, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, you, you had relationships with your own kind. Right. And, you know, so I had to, to, uh, make my mind put my mind on okay this is the new world it's it's this is this is this is it's okay mm -hmm. then you know so and i have to say the other day asia and i were 
uh, uh, we were at the mall somewhere, and I, I saw two female walk mm. holding hands, and I go, mm, mm, mm. And Asia looks at me and she says, "What?" I said, "Okay." And please, y'all, don't get mad. Because <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm like going like two inches in my seat, yeah, waiting to hear this she, point, she, she made a point to me. She said, "What if I was gay?" And I had to think. I'm like, okay, well, I would, I, I would, I wouldn't love you any less. So, what's the difference? That's just it. It, it's. I'm I'm I w I'm guilty of judging for two people. Doesn't matter whether they were man and woman, two men or two women. I am guilty of judging uh, lesbians. But let me ask you this question: How does that affect your life? It don't. I mean, why would it affect my life? My life is my life. You're heterosexual, so it would not affect you. Uh, I'm sorry. It, you're heterosexual, so no, yeah. How I mean, could it affect you? It don't. And so I had to. I had to, what I had. I had to 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 go within myself and say, you know what? You need to be ashamed of yourself for judging them because there's only one judge, and I'm not it. No. So you know. What they, what, you know, what the uh, the lesbians, gays, transgenders, what they do is none of my business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I had to say that I was guilty of that. But let me say this, okay? So when I hear folks say, because I want to choose my words. And I'm coming to you, Miss Polk. I'm going to read your comment. It's too big to put on the screen. You're going to cover us up. Um, but when I hear people say, I don't care what they do. Or I'm not in their room. Or you, you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, follow me here. Okay. So when I hear that, I think they don't care what you do. They don't make a distinction exactly. as to as to what you do. So being heterosexual, they don't look at us and say, well, I don't care what they do and they, you know, what they do. It, it doesn't matter. It, it, it really, it doesn't matter. They're still human matter. beings. It doesn't you know? matter one iota. So to me, in matter to anyone right right so to me in that aspect it seems to me that there's still that that inkling of discrimination you know because we don't even have to reference well i don't care what they do as long as they don't bother me they don't want you <laughs> It's up to you to say, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm 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 straight, you know, but I'm flattered. I've had women hit on me, and all I can do is say, oh wow, thank you, you know, I'm flattered. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm liked by two different genders. Yes, uh, <laughs> but I'm heterosexual. I I'm straight, so. It's okay to say that, you know, it's not saying that, well, you know, I prefer, no, it's just who you are. It's not a preference. It's just who you are. If that makes sense. No, it makes, totally, okay. it totally makes sense to me. So Miss Polk, I can't put your comment up, girl. She says, transgenders are all are okay. It's, it just catches me off guard when I walk into a lady's room and I see a big, tall transgender, transgender, and it happened to me twice so far. I get a little afraid, but I guess it's just catching me off guard. What are you afraid of, though? Well, you know what? 
I think I kind of I kind of understand what she's saying on that one because you know you you walk into a lady's room and you know you expect to see a female an act you know a, a woman in there by I've your never, standard I've, I've never I've never experienced it okay I'm just assuming but you know if if you're a male usually men transgenders are larger than uh, than the the normal than female. a female right right so mm -hmm. you know but then there are big women too I guess I'm but I guess that would kind of throw me off a little bit to see a transgender in the restroom but would it bother me I don't it, it, I don't think it would bother me um I was gonna say something else and then I went to that but um <laughs> The tallness and knowing it is a man. Oh. But okay. that's a man by your standard. It's what you see. It's the physical of what, it's the visual of what you see. But to them, they're a woman. They feel like a female. They, they, they identify as a female. So it's, again, it's it's you. It, it doesn't mean just because they're tall. Hell, there could be a tall woman in there that'll whip yeah. your ass in the ladies' room. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know what? Here they have, and I've seen it in, in quite a few places now. They have men, women, and family. So, I'm like, okay, well, why would they have? A man's room, a men's room, a woman's room, and a family room. A family room? There's family. I don't understand why that there would be a difference. Well, you know what? I'm assuming it is for, um, you know, people that are, you know, transgenders or the gay or, you know, I don't know. I just assume that. I didn't ask because it wasn't my business. So, so okay. So, I've been kind of like holding on to this story. All right? Because I don't, like I said, I don't want to offend anyone. I know that there are a lot of people that watch the show. A lot of people I know. Um, and I don't, I don't want to offend anybody. So, oh, what's up, Cedric, Kathleen Kumar? How you guys doing? So, with what I do, I meet a lot of people. Okay, uh, people that I probably wouldn't run into in everyday life, um, but this is my everyday life. So I, I run into a lot of people. And I have an opportunity to uh, sit down with people, meet people on the first site, okay? So I had this one applicant and uh, when, when I pulled up the application, it was a man's name. And when I called this man, it sounded like a woman. So I'm thinking, well, it's okay to have like a, what do they call it? Um, um, when you can use a, a name for a girl or boy. I, so I don't, you know, I don't judge. I'm just saying, okay, well, all right, that's your name. So the person came in uh, for their interview and immediately I knew that she was transgender. Sweetest person in the world. Best interview I think I've ever had with someone, okay? I mean, she was on point on everything. She had great personality. She was funny. Um, okay, you just somebody I could hang out with, okay? And so I hired her on, and the, uh, the thing that came up was, and I felt horrible for her. Uh, she came to me and she asked me, uh, Miss Tony, what bathroom would I use? And I said, what bathroom do you feel comfortable using? 
And she said, the women's bathroom. I said, well, then use the women's bathroom. Um, and as she was going through the training or whatnot, you know, when they're in the classrooms, you know, there's two two bathrooms. There's the bathrooms in, in my section of the office, which is like for the executives, right? And then there's the bathroom that's off of the mobility center. So I told her, I said, well, just come in here, you know, if you feel uncomfortable. And I tried to make sure that every concession was made for her so that she would feel comfortable. Even to the fact of going to my boss asking, you know, she wants to be addressed by this name. Mm -hmm. So can we put this, you know, on her uh, official file? How do we, you know, how do we do it? Because I'd never had to deal with that. And uh, I was told, no, you have to use the legal name. Um, but that was my first um, encounter in having to make concessions so that that person would feel comfortable. Because the last thing I wanted to do was make her feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, telling her she would have to use a bathroom that didn't that she didn't identify with. You know, how do you identify and you've got on, you know, you've, you've got a full beat facial makeup on, you fully beat. Dressing like a female, how do I make someone go into a male bathroom? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure that during some of her, the processes of her, um, her training, that there were the, you know, the the stares, the sneers, the snickers. I, I know it was because people are cruel. Yes, they are. They're fucking cruel. And I felt horrible when she left us because she was just such a good person, you know, and I never stay. made her, huh? She didn't stay? No, she didn't stay, you know, but um, it's, 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 it's a horrible situation that they have to live in. And it's not just the military. We do it every day when we talk about employment, you know, people that, you know, will give you the looks or the stares because you're not like them. Mm -hmm. And it's whatever that may be. Yeah. You know, and hell, who wants to be like you in the first place? You know, who are you to stare and snicker and sneer, you know, because your life is fucked up too. <laughs> But who said, who said their life is fucked up? They just have a different, they have too many, one too many, what, chromosomes or gene or whatever they call it? You know, it's, but to them, it's, it, that's their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some probably have a better life than a whole bunch of us. I just don't understand how we as a people, whether you are color or non-color, um, I just don't understand how we as a people live in this country, which was, um, which is for the most part of a, uh, of a Christian base because our, our money says in God we trust, all of these things, right? That is how this, this country was built. And uh, we talk about discrimination and uh, uh, shutting people out just because of who they are, or who they choose to identify as. I just don't see the, I don't see how it parallels with who we are when we have such hatred uh, for people. I, I, I don't, I don't, but I'm hoping somebody can explain it to me. What are you afraid of? You know, if you're homophobic, what are you afraid of? Uh, with I someone still, to come into contact with who is transgender or, or gay or lesbian. I still think that when you are homophobic, you are you have the, you're fighting that those that 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 tendency of being with a same sex person. I don't even think Remember, it's that. You think so? Do you, you watch um, Have and Have Nots? Yeah. The white cop. Mm hmm He fought and fought and fought 
uh, Jer was Jeremy. Um, come on, you know the guy on there that's the black. Oh, boy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the little black boy. Yeah. Um, when they first met, he was. I mean, he had such rage against him because he was because gay. he was gay. And come to find out, he was in denial that he was gay. But everybody is that. not in denial. They just, but he, they just have just a, a a misunderstanding, or they just have a hatred. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody that's homophobic have those tendencies, but a lot of them do. I mean, you know, you wonder why people are racist. Why are people? Why? Why do? You know, why are people racist? It's just something that's embedded in them. Yeah, and they're afraid. They are, yeah. But what's to be afraid of if you don't get to know the person? Like I said, when I mentioned... I'm afraid of the unknown. Yeah, but when I mentioned the story I just told you about this this person, I wasn't, a, I wasn't afraid. I mean, what could you do to me? Because I'll fight your ass back if you want to get I'll into a fight. <laughs> but I mean, you know what? When I was out there driving transit, I can't say I ran into quite a, few, a whole bunch of, of, of transgenders, but I ran into quite a, a whole bunch of gays, lesbians. And I mean, they are, I have fun. We laugh, talk, bullshit, go on, on and one of them actually told me, uh, <laughs> he told me how to put on my makeup. He's like, you know what? They got the best makeup tips. <laughs> yeah. And I, we talked from the time we left the uh, transit center all the way to his stop, which was uh, downtown uh, Las Vegas. And he gave me such, I mean, I started trying to use them, but, you know, sometimes it just <laughs> don't work. But, you know, we, I, I had such fun with, you know, they're just they're but see that's they're, that's the whole thing. I just I I don't understand. I just I don't understand. And for for a country of which we live, the U.S. military would put such you know stipulations on you being able to serve your country. You know what's the point? I mean, why would you tell someone to you could you could enlist? However, you have to enlist and be in this new job as the gender you were born. Because so, I think it's a slap in the face. Yeah, I do too. And that's what I thought when I heard it. So do you think once Carrot Top is, is out of office, can this be reversed? Yeah. Yeah, you can reverse an executive order or uh, executive memorandum. Yeah, because it's not law. And you can even, um, even if it were law, you could overturn it. Uh, you could um, uh, edit it somehow. I mean, because as you can see in the description, over a course, you know, of years, uh, the do not uh, ask, do not tell um, policy had been amended, you know, mm -hmm. so it's been amended four times, but I just thought that the way it was last amended here, just this last, this month. Yeah. Uh, basically last week on the 19th, it's a slap in the face because you're making them and forcing them to be who they are not. Yeah, you are. He is. You know? yes, he is. Yeah. Trying yeah. To. yeah. 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 So, that's my take on it. That is my take on it. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> OMG. I wish somebody would have called us and tell us uh, their point of view. Um, Kathleen Kumar, she's like, oh, I don't know what that all was for. Because <laughs> we were so busy talking. What's up, Miss Yolanda Lee? It's good to see you, girl. <laughs> no. Did I say hello to Cedric? Yeah. I did. He yeah. said hello to you too, Vonnie. He's the only one that calls you. 
<laughs> I didn't say hello to my daughter-in-law. Yolanda. You didn't. No. We'll say hi. Hi, Yoli. Hey. I'm hi, gonna... Yoli. I'm, I'm not going to put up her last comment. I'll just put up that one. <laughs> Uh, I need to make an appointment with you to get a a, a, a mani and a patty. I know. <laughs> I tell her that every time I talk to Brian. I said, tell Yolanda, I said, I need a mani and a patty. <laughs> so that means you, uh, you need to fly into your manicurist. I do. Well, <laughs> I don't know. My hands look so horrible. And I'm scared to go here and get my feet, my nails done because. Why? Because she didn't, she didn't spoil me. Yolanda spoiled me. I could go in and tell her, I, except for red. She won't do red on my fingers, on my nails. Why? Because she don't like red. But it's your nails. That's what I kept telling her. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so what did Cedric say? He said, what if one day she decides to dress as a man? What bathroom would she use? Oh, that was an old comment. Um, I would say whatever you feel comfortable with. I can't make, the, I can't make a, dis, you know, a, a decision as to what you're comfortable with. That's his or her decision. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's up to you. Because truth be told, truth be told, now I'm straight as an arrow, right? But look, if I got to pee and the women's bathroom is occupied, I'm going in the male bathroom. It's the same <laughs> damn bathroom. I may feel funny sitting there looking at a, at a urinal, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no urinal in the one in the executive side. So. Yeah, I had to do that the other day because the woman's bathroom was, was occupied. So I had to go in the men's bathroom. And when I got in there, I saw this urinal sitting up there. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So I have Wait. a question. Okay. So when we say uh being heterosexual that we're straight. Why would we say we're straight? Does that That's mean that they're question. straight? We're straight. That's a really good question. That's a really, really good question. I think for the most part, I think we get used to saying or uh, using certain terms uh, based on what we've heard. Um, that's why I think I've used heterosexual, but I'll say straight, you know, every now and then, but I'll use heterosexual. Um, I, I don't know. No, they're not crooked. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. Oh my gosh. So again, I invite you to uh, send your comments, but you also you can call in. The number is area code 702-970-4887 or 970-HTTR. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wanted to hear from someone. I did, you know. Where is Jacqueline? That's right. She's not here. I thought I know I sent her an invite. Well, she don't. You, I didn't see her on event. the board. No. She would have definitely came in. She's always the first one in. Yeah. She's not here. Well, Jacqueline, I hope you're okay. Because you know it's like flu and colds and all kind of stuff going around so you never know i don't think but, that stopped her yeah probably not probably not i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing her again because i told you she came out last year to the alumni event yeah. and you're gonna miss it again uh so i'll take this time to mention it but the uh banning high school all alumni picnic i'm uncomfortable in this chair <laughs> Is that why well, yeah, because one, I had to lower the chair to kind of like match you. Is it a new chair? No, it's just, I don't know why I'm just uncomfortable down this low. Oh. I am uncomfortable. Match me. 
<laughs> but the Banning High School All Alumni uh, Picnic is going on on Saturday, June 1st. Uh, the festivities will start at 10 o'clock a.m. and last throughout 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock p.m. You know, we always got the stragglers because those are the ones that drink. <laughs> and they're trying to come down. <laughs> but uh, it goes on at Point Furman Park. Again, that is in uh, June, on June 1st in uh, San Pedro, California. I'll be uh, sitting out there having the fun like I always do. I'll be emceeing again. This will be my ninth year. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you. So Banning High School, all alumni picnic, which means there's no particular class. Uh, anything uh, or any year that you have uh, graduated, we welcome you. We even welcome those uh, rival schools. You know, so if you didn't go to Banning High School, we still welcome you to come out and enjoy the fun. Lots of food, lots of music, dancing, games, drinking. And if you partake in the other stuff, you could do that too. <laughs> so <laughs> It's legal now. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? What? I'll be there on June 1st. Really? Yeah, I'm leaving. I think I'm taking a flight out on the 25th of the 26th of May. And I haven't made up my mind where I'm coming back. But you'll be here for June 1st. Yeah. Then you can drive to California with me. <gasps> I can ride to California with you. <laughs> Yes, I'm an honorary pilot. Yes, you are. They did that. Uh, what five years ago? Was it five years ago? It's been longer than before. Was it before we, I left Vegas? I mean, uh, California or mm, no? No, we were in California, so it's been five years. No, it's been like seven years ago. Seven years. Actually, wow. it, it was the first year you did the uh, MC. No, I've done it before that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because well, this is my ninth it's year. Been over five, it's been over six years. I know. Yeah. So Yolanda, she wrote a long comment. Let's see if it's going to hide us. Yep. <laughs> Yolanda says, I have a friend that looks like a guy. Uh, she is a stud. We go together to the bathroom to the bathroom, two white women tell her she is in the women's bathroom, the men's bathroom was next door. Now that's just rude. It is. That's just rude. No. See, you know what, Yolanda? I'm the kind of woman, I would have cussed her out. Up one side, down the other one. I would have cussed her out and I would have told her, mind her damn business. She's in the bathroom that she chose to be in. That's just the way I look at it. But she's a woman. She's a woman. Go to the bathroom you feel like going to. But she says she's got a friend that looks like a guy. Right. And it was none of that white woman's damn business. It wasn't. It, it, it's nobody's business. But I do have a question for Miss Yolanda. Gosh, Miss Yolanda, I wish you would get on camera with me. Yeah, and Miss Yolanda. Um, I posted the link. I'm gonna post the link again. I'm gonna put it in the in the in the chat area. Which um, are you talking about? Huh? Which Yolanda are you talking to? Yolanda Lee. Oh, okay. Yolanda Lee. Cedric said, "Yeah, that's very rude." Oh, You're posted welcome. the wrong thing. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, that is rude. It is rude. That woman would have gotten cussed out." And Cedric, you know me. I would. I cussed. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, EMG. But I got a question for Miss Yolanda and anybody else that could answer this question. Don't you think that it's derogatory to call a woman who um, dresses like a man or a male a stud? Isn't that... I would think it's derogatory. 
Well, now that, that, that depends. That depends on if she is a lesbian. Mm. Because usually the, I mean that. Well, see, I don't know. Now I'm talking out the side of my mouth. I don't know. Well, that's why I asked the question because I don't know. But to me, to me, it feels derogatory. I don't know why. I just, I just think that it feels derogatory. But it's it's from what I can remember when I first. When I first got um, introduced to the lesbian, gay, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the gay communities, the guy that, uh, the guy, the, the female that was the dominant one was called a stud. But why do you, why? That feel, it just I sounds know. derogatory to me. They just look and dressed more manly. So instead of why isn't she just a lesbian? Why does there have to be an identification as to one who is the the one that that identifies more on the male side or dresses like a male versus the woman who is more feminine? That's a good question. Oh, Yolanda got tea. She said, I need to tell you about a guy on Plenty of Fish. <laughs> Yolanda, Yolanda, you need to call in. You need to call, okay? I'm going to give, you know what? Uh, call this number. I'm going to give you this number. It's going to be direct. Uh, call that number. It's going to be direct, okay? Because I want to know how well. I want to know now. <laughs> how are you going to like come in here and talk about I got something to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then just going to leave it like that, knowing that we're going to have questions and we can't type this fast on here, you know? So the number, call direct, 702-245-5488. All right, I want to hear from you, Miss Yolanda. Uh, yeah, you but I, slow, Yolanda. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, I've always wondered why you just have, why that word is you. To me, it's like saying, um, you know how the word "fag" yeah. was used. You know, to me that you know. That was derogatory. That is very, very derogatory. Right. So unpolitically. Right. And, it's so just much, and I had, uh, that word was, was said um, a few days ago. And mm -hmm. I really had to tell them, you know what, that is not, that, using that word is not nice at all. It's you not. Throw, you throw that out. And they're like, well, why? That's what they are. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Cedric says if we stop the labeling and just identify people as simple human beings the world would be a better place you're absolutely they right they really will you're be. absolutely right then how about you know? calling that person their name you know and, right right because it to me it doesn't make sense and um I think what's what's really sad I think is that a lot of times as we get older um Unfortunately, you know, we start to get into these ways because um, I know people that are in our age group, you know, they sound more like what our parents sounded like, you know, where everything was bad and everybody had a label and, air, you know, and they used the, the derogatory words and they weren't accepting of, you know, certain, you know, people, whether it was, you know, white or blacks or uh, gay or straight or, or, or lesbian. They just weren't accepting. So as we get older, I think that a lot of people that I know, they fall into that. And that seems to bother me, you know? Yeah, it, it that, really that bothered me too, because I mean, that was, that word is so unnecessary. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, it's rude. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Yolanda is asking, well, how do I go live with you both? Okay, Yolanda, I just posted the link again. Uh, if you've got a camera on your phone, um, you want to hit that link that I just posted. And it's going to ask you, I think, to download. I think it's going to ask you to download the app. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, you have to download Be Live. Yeah, download the app, and then uh, it'll bring you directly into our little uh, holding suite. And then I can see you come up, and then I'll put you on live. Yeah, because I want to know what the heck she was talking about. I want to hear some tea. Spill, Yolanda, spill. Ooh, tea and crumpets. <laughs> tea and crumpets. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we've got four minutes, Miss Yolanda. That's what we got. So we'll wait. We will wait. But do, let me ask you this question while we're waiting on Yolanda. So do you think that you're more accepting today than you were maybe 10 years ago? Yes. What what was the change? Um, the change was actually, um, what do you call it? It's, I guess I really kind of got educated on the, um, on you know, the LGBTQ, and the T just came in, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, when I first when I first I mentioned when I first started uh, meeting the lesbian gay communities or not people. I got Miss Yolanda. Miss Yolanda? Well, hello, ladies. Hello, Miss Yolanda. You got to turn your, turn your volume down. Turn your volume down. Is that better? That is a lot better. <laughs> How are y'all doing, ladies? We're doing good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, wonderful. So uh, we couldn't let you go without finding out the tea on this guy on Plenty of Fish. <laughs> well, you know, I've been single a long time. Okay. So and we talked about about two months ago I started to go out and leave him out and everything so I went to a club right there on Sahara the one with the uh, uh, I, I know it really before it was a gay club Okay. not knowing that was a gay club the one on Sahara okay. so he gets out the car and everything he's a drag queen Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. So when you met him, he was just in his regular clothing. Yeah, so nice dress, very well, very professional and everything. Really? And he likes to dress me up, but his other side on me likes to be a woman. Re really? So did, how was his makeup? Flawless. <laughs> was she <laughs> flawless? He was so clean, cleaner than I'd ever, I mean, dressed to the teeth. Makeup was flawless. So were you jealous? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you wouldn't see him again? No, not never. No, no not never. <laughs> it's just not a. It's just not a simple no. It's no, not never. Not never. Not never. <laughs> and so you just never know who you might. You might. You know. You might be on his website. You know. You see. I wanted to show you one side of him, and the other side. This man is so well dressed, very professional, 
and he was a, he was a drag. He, he, he might be your one. You just never know. But uh, it's not good to judge. I didn't judge. But I wish you had told me ahead of time. That way, I would have prepared for it. Oh my you know, God! I don't think he would have stuck around. What'd you say? What'd you say, Yvonne? I said I don't think he expected to meet her at the at the gay club. <laughs> <laughs> and by saying that, this man was in the military. He's a military man. Really? Oh, wrong. Right. Yes, I had to share that with you guys. You just never know. But he was a man in the military. Did he? Did he happen to say that he was, he had told other people in the military that he was a drag queen? No, he keeps it a secret. Really? So what happens if one of his, you know, his troop mates comes into this gay club and see him as a drag queen? Would they know who he is or does he look totally different? Totally, totally different. This is like night day. Like night day. You will never know. Yeah, stockings, uh, so, dress. How, how, did, how did you recognize him? He said he was driving a Jaguar in a park right next to him. OMG. He got in the car, I couldn't believe it. And he's in the military, but he keeps it a secret, but you never know if you've seen him just like a, a regular, good looking, very good looking man to be a totally good woman. You never know. No, you don't. Never know, and he's in the military. Oh, and because they are well, strict about the whole gay thing, you know, so he keeps the secret. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> so you doing okay? I'm doing fine. You tell my girls and hello. Her remind me to about the uh, the baddie thing because I was I graduated in 1976. So. So. <laughs> So you, uh, y'all drive, do it together. Okay, so uh, Yvonne, yes, me and Yolanda found out we went to the same high school. She went to Banning. Oh, really? So who <laughs> haven't been to Banning? <laughs> <laughs> Except me. <laughs> I don't even know how we I don't even know how we got into the conversation. I can't really remember Yolanda, but when she told me, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> she went to Banning. So she was in 76. She graduated in 76. And I was just getting there in 76. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. So yes, I want to see you. We yeah. you, you gotta come. You have to. Yeah, because I'm going to drive. I drive up every year. I've never driven out there. I've been asked for you, and I've never done it. Okay, well, this is your year. Okay, it sounds good. So, I'm going to keep in touch. And, uh, and my girl, she's coming down too, right? Yes. Okay, we're going to make the trip. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, my love. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. That was a kick. I love it. We love you too. Love you too. Good night. Wow. Wow is right. I mean, so I met would, some doozy on POF, but not like that. What would you have done? For me? Yeah. I don't know. I, I probably would have did the same thing she did. Really? Fun. Yeah. I've been to I would have I would have stuck it out cuz I'd want to know his makeup tips. Oh, you mean as far as you know what? I think we probably would have tried to rem remain friends after that. Right. But um no, I I yeah. <laughs> I've been pissed <laughs> at it. say she could have doubled her wardrobe. <laughs> I'm telling you, they wear some banging stuff. They, oh, my gosh. Oh, geez. Well, we are out of time. Uh, we've gone over, and it is time to get out of here. You ready to go? Yes, indeed. You is? I, I is, too. All right. 
Well, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who had joined in tonight and, and uh, tuned in. We really, really enjoyed tonight's show. We enjoyed your comments, and we always will be appreciative to your continued support over these past uh, nine, ten years. So um, we want you to come on back and join in again. We'll be coming back next week, every Wednesday night at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 10 o'clock Central, and 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Make sure that you follow us here on Facebook under Hot Topics Talk Radio. Uh, and also check out our website at hottopicstalkradio.com as well as YouTube under Hot Topics Talk Radio Network. Thank you, Miss Kathleen Kumar, Miss Yolanda Lee, Seti the Hamp. <laughs> also, uh, Miss Yolanda. Who else do we have? I don't want to miss anybody. Miss uh, Yolanda Polk. Uh, and quite a few. Oh, Mr. Seal. Mr. Seal is a trucker. He's on the road, so be safe. Uh, hoping you shut it down to watch tonight's show. And uh, everybody who had uh, tuned in that we didn't see uh, in our chat. But we really do thank you for joining in. I'm ready to get out of here, Miss Yvonne. You ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. So come on back next week, everybody. We wish you a good rest of your week and a fantastic weekend. And as always, God bless. God bless. Good night. <laughs> good night. Hot Topics Talk Radio, we are now clear. Thank you, everybody, again for tuning in. We really, really, truly appreciate your continued support. And we always look forward to seeing you back here with us every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. What was I going to say? Oh, 8 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Central, and 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Hot Topics Talk Radio, good night.